we're back. Welcome back to episode six of the Reformed Film Lad podcast. Today's episode is titled... I don't I don't remember what we're going to title it. Uh-oh. Revenge of... Sierra. <laughs> we'll just say oh, that. The Revenge why? of Sierra. That is an excellent title. And there I guess we we're going to get into why, why today. Why, though? Oh, you know why. <laughs> you know very well. You know very well why. I think all the 20,000 other people do, too. So <laughs> Yeah, 20,000 plus people. So, oh, um, dear. Before we get into that, though, what do we have on the table today? Who's starting off? Who is starting off? Am I starting off? I think you are. You had the okay. idea. Muffins. Coffee cake muffins from Duncan. They're delicious. I introduced them to the lab like a week and a half ago, and they're amazing. And so Ava went and picked up some Yep. for the lab, so... Mm. That's one of the things on the table. Do they have real coffee in them? I hope so. I don't think so. I think it's just it's it's like, like a co- coffee, coffee cake. cake. It's like it comes with but you it's a drink muffin? with coffee. Yeah, it's a drink with coffee. Oh, it's an you drink it with coffee. I gotcha. But you don't so. dunk. You don't. So you had the it idea to bring have... coffee cake muffins, but you didn't have the idea to bring coffee. I brought her coffee this morning. Ava's was the one that ended it. I just got them. All right, so we're gonna, I guess, enjoy them. I brought for the table today the new Kodak Super 8 camera because we're gonna start developing. No, no, we're not. No, we're not, oh gonna, my do goodness, no. <laughs> we're not gonna do that. No. So the story with this is uh, Kodak. Literally, it's funny. It's called Super 8 because they announced this camera was gonna come out eight years ago. Oh. Uh, I think at the uh, CES, the Consumer Electronics Show, like out in Vegas, they hold every year. <laughs> And when they announced it, it was supposed to be like this $800 camera and they were going to offer developing where you would get your Super 8 film, send it into Kodak. They would upload it to the cloud and download it. And then Hmm. it got delayed and they got delayed. And then I think COVID happened and then they basically put the project on hold and it has finally come out, but it's no longer $800. Yeah, I was just going to say that's um, a good bit lower (laughs) than it ended up being. Yeah, so they finally brought it to the market, and it costs fifty five hundred dollars. Dang, <sighs> it's wild. That is a lot. Business expense. Yeah. So yeah, we it's bought right one. Uh, I bought it because I've always wanted to try Super Eight, and there's a lot of new things that it has that you wouldn't find on an older Super Eight camera. I mean, there's <laughs> some nice old Super Eight cameras that are out there, but right now we have an unboxing video that we did. I think with you and Bri. I think it was Bray and I. Yeah, yeah. That was a fun thing to do, to actually unbox it. But right now we have four cartridges of film that we have sent off to a cinema lab because, no, we don't develop Super 8 film and we won't be developing <laughs> Super 8 film. It's a totally different Mm-mm. beast. I think we were looking at pictures online of like what the machines it look like. It looks wild. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because the Super 8 film is like 50-foot cartridges. And so you have labs that develop that, but then you have like 16 millimeter, you have 35 millimeter, and those get to be 400 and 1,000 foot rolls. So we develop film here. It's like Jeez. three feet long. Which could you imagine like a 1,000 foot roll of film? Insane yeah. amount of film. It takes it up though as it goes, right? Or does it like... I guess they would... I don't know how, how it, it would work. I mean, yeah. I know how our machines work. You know, we put the film cartridges in and the film gets developed, but there would have to be... It has to be in the dark naturally and mm-hmm. it would have to be developed in such a way. It's probably on a real system and it starts mm. pulling it through dries it uh, somehow and then reels it back into a form onto another reel so it can be scanned. So no different than like scanning what we do, but just cinema style. So right now we have four cartridges that we have shot and my fingers are crossed that I did it right (laughs) because it's not cheap to develop Super 8 film. Mm. I think it was like $70 a cartridge. Oh Oh my goodness. And you get two and a half minutes of footage. Yikes. That is expensive. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> so we have those sent off to Negative Land. They're processing them. And I think by the end of the week, we'll get them back and we will publish a video showing this is our initial footage. But we're going to do a review on it. So mm-hmm. prepare yourselves. And then we're going to sell Super 8 film. We won't develop it, but I've contacted Kodak and <laughs> we can sell it. Yay. My timer went off. All right. I'll have to keep track of it. So what else do we have on the table today? Well, why do I have to go next? Well, <laughs> I was going. Uh, well, we have the new Ilfa Color film, which I actually really liked. I bet you do. I bet. <laughs> no, I I liked Metropolis too, and it's similar. Like 92, Metropolis, Ilfa Color. I feel like 92 have, is not where it's at. 
No, I don't. I agree. I like the Alpha Color better than 92. But it has a very, like, vintage-y. I, I don't know. I really like the look of it. It does so, have a nice look. Yeah. I think it's a better version of what 92 is trying to be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It gives more of a vintage look. I don't, for some reason, 92 tends to take, like, a really green. Or blue. Which I know it's, like, the look, but it's, like, too much. It's almost. But maybe that's just the way it's been shot. Because I never personally shot a roll. I shot so. a roll, and it came out pretty blue honestly like a lot of like blue shadows which yeah with this one like it's if you sh- if you shoot it yes yeah, so it, it looks pretty good i mean mm. what i shot it as it was a little bright so it had like a greener more blown out look but that's because i was shooting it in super bright light but the two rolls you guys shot looked great the colors looked awesome i liked yours I liked well yeah yours you too. so we did the review on this and it's been our most popular youtube video to date like crazy i was really blown away because we didn't get any help filming it and it was just kind of put together but we did it unique we did a challenge video that is our first challenge it was our first challenge video so if you have not seen it you can go and watch it but spoiler alert clearly sierra dominated i wonder if that has anything to do with the fact that the watch rate goes down significantly once you get past the first couple of minutes and i'm the first one I don't think it dropped significantly per se, but it, I mean, so YouTube does have this thing. Ava and I are just quitting films, what we're doing. Yeah, we're done. We're over it. (laughs) It's not worth it. (laughs) Yeah, I would look at some of the YouTube statistics on it and there's always, as the videos go, there's always a little bit of a drop off. But when you look at the comments, I think clearly people watched it. And as of today, uh, the video has been out a little over a week and we have over 21,000 views on the video, which for us is ridiculous because we'll get like two to 3,000 views a video or like our Aurora review video, we got like 6,000. And that was like a brand new film to the market like this one. Mm. Uh, But yeah, we did the challenge and we had people go and vote on it and... Ava and John got slaughtered yep. mm-hmm. very badly. <laughs> Ava, so tell us how you feel about getting slaughtered by your big sister. Business as usual. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> how does it feel for you? I mean, you're the newbie. And it, you- f- it feels very strange. Like I was f- fully expecting to lose. Like, I mean, John and Ava, they have so much more experienced than me so i figured naturally clearly I... not enough <laughs> also that sounds like all i could think about when you're t- while you were saying that is like someone talking at the oscars yeah. or something what? like i fully didn't expect it came out of left to field. win I really, <laughs> they, they no. have the tell- it's so you can, funny you yeah. can att- michael can attest to the fact that he no, no. he's like, trying to fly under the radar again guys she's no. been doing this for like for five years she can't do that i don't even know how to shoot film what's film all of it What's that, Ava? Love it. Just, What's that? Okay. She's secretly been practicing, <laughs> no. and now she's coming to, to destroy us every time we do a competition. <laughs> oh, my goodness. No, I didn't even want to say the thing about beating you guys, and Michael was like, no, say it. Oh, no, we were talking about it on today's podcast. I mean, number one, it was our most popular video, and number two, if you just skim through the votes, it's like Sierra, 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 John, Sierra, Sierra, Ava, Ava, John, Sierra, Sierra. Yeah. Sierra, Sierra, Sierra. 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 I can keep going, but 400 comments. We had like we five had comments each between us. I and think, all yeah. the rest hey, were Sierra. Those five people, we appreciate you. <laughs> what we need to do is we need to go and like actually tally them. Because I thought I would have to actually tally them and like keep track. Yeah. Mm. But literally within three to four days of it I going up. I don't know if up, I want to see it tally. You don't want to see it tally? No. Yeah, no. I'm good. I'm well, good. I, I kind of want to tally it now because I want to see who got second place. Because you guys got votes. You got some. Mm-hmm. You got some votes. I think votes. it was John. That was probably Ava. Yeah. I don't know. Well, there definitely was like crowd specific people. Yeah. We shot very. Mm, I think that's what we talked it, about. Yeah. Um, even before the video was released, we were talking about it because we saw the scans, obviously. Mm. And we we're John and I were talking about it. That Sierras are very aesthetically pleasing and more versatile to general film photographers. One variety. You had like everything. Whereas we had like the same thing that we shot, basically. Yeah. We, we hit the, you hit the car people. Right. And I hit the biker community and maybe and the smoking maybe community. a few other <laughs> car people. I don't know. Yeah, there were a few comments that really honed in on your portrait of that guy smoking the cigarette. Mm-hmm. I think that was like literally as we were leaving. The oh, d- yeah. The, we the were leaving. I saw him standing out there. He pulled out a cigarette. I was like, nope, we're going back for a portrait. <laughs> and you took a portrait of another guy who uh, offered you a free ride on his bike. He yeah. did. 
Anyway, <laughs> it was a lot of fun. No, it was a fun video to shoot. Yeah, that, I that agree. was a fun video. So, John, tell us a little bit about how you secured your content because yeah. it yes. was very much, <laughs> I wouldn't say desperation, but it was, it was, it was more of a joke, really. I threw it out my story and was like, on, Instagram. on my Instagram story, I was like, hey, like, they don't have an advice on like places to shoot Norman. And I tagged uh, Ava and Michael, just like, I'm trying to beat my uh, coworkers or whatever. And um, one of our local guys reached out, Jonathan DeHate, and he said, like, oh, like, here's a couple different places you could shoot. And he goes, oh, and if you want, I have an old, it was a Chevelle or no, 19, Impala. 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 1969 Impala, Impala. And so he's like, I have this, I could, I could like pull it out for you. And I was like, oh no, like it's, I can't, like I got stuff going on. He's like, well, I take, take real quick. So I like, was like, okay, like, and he's, he was down only the road. Two, he's literally like two blocks down the road from us. Coincidentally enough. And so yeah. there was a time and there's like this little like dead end row where there was a nice little area to shoot. And so we went back there and took some pictures. It was awesome. On Very the nice car. Yeah. And awesome. you got to and use the Leica. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, Never that Mr. Before. I don't own a 35 millimeter <laughs> camera anymore. How convenient. I own them. They just don't work. What happened to them? He broke them. I don't even know. Like a battery, I think, exploded inside of one. Um, <laughs> How did you manage that? No, like it was just old. And then and I had. And you let him shoot the Leica? And then I had. I let uh, him work at the lab unsupervised, <laughs> is what I'm wondering. <laughs> no, I didn't I didn't mess with Like I just got to it. And, like the oh, battery man. had like corroded. And then a couple of them, like the shutters. Won't fire just the, the buttons. The, bros, the back won't shut on one. It just keeps popping open. Hmm. And then the other one just stopped working. The electronics are just fried on it. So yeah, now but I'm you, shooting 120. Yeah, you have that 120 camera that got repaired right. at KEH. How's it mm. been? How's it been shooting? I mean, we haven't love talked about it. That camera. It's all he shoots. That's pretty much all I shoot, and it's. I love it. It's such a great camera. It's awesome. Yeah, we put that meme in the video. Yeah, the 120 <laughs> shooters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about if you shoot both? If you shoot both. 120 just, and 35? Just means you're uh, not a snob, I suppose, <laughs> like John. <laughs> I'll take it. I know there's 120 snobs out there. Comment. 120 strong. Yeah, but that worked out. That did work out well because when we uh, we had the idea of doing the challenge video and it was just like, okay, you guys have to decide your locations. And you picked downtown Orman, mm -hmm. which I thought was probably perfect yeah it was a good choice and i mm -hmm. think a lot of people in the comments that's what they said is that you had such a variety of mm -hmm. images and orman does have like a vintagey downtown feel like the buildings right. the uh, coffee yeah. shop if we, we could have gone farther i would have totally chosen either saint augustine mm -hmm. or downtown deland in the historic district yeah. that would have been yeah i think better than orman i think I agree. I think at first it's too far away. We were talking about that too, and I think didn't you say someday you want to do like a field trip up to St. Augustine where we I all do. go shoot? Yeah, I mean St. Augustine is the oldest city in the United States. Is that? Mm -hmm. I think that's correct. Uh, it's I like over so. five hundred yeah. years old because it definitely predates you know seventeen seventy six. Mm. But uh, yeah, I think there's just so much to shoot there that. I want to go out and make some YouTube videos, but just to go shoot film, there's just yeah. there's too many subjects to yeah. choose from. Mm -hmm. St. Augustine is a city where you could literally go for like a weekend and you won't exhaust all the different yeah. places you yeah. can go to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think something that may have helped me too when doing the like the vintagey look is that that is an aesthetic that I personally really love, even just as it comes to like dressing and the dance like the type of dancing they did in that time period so i think that may have helped that i already have an interest in she that. was truly inspired <laughs> <laughs> it yeah no, no i mean yeah if you look at the comments like people said your variety of subjects and it's kind of i think what one not that you guys didn't have good photos but there's yeah. probably an inherent advantage because it's you okay, had we know we had good photos there was more options too, like to pick up more. It's like if you're just looking at like just pictures of motorcycles and like pictures of a car, it's like, oh, they, they, like we didn't try or like we didn't have a good variety, whereas Sierra right. had everything. I was really happy though that Jonathan brought his yeah, car yeah, out. That, that was, was awesome. Super, yeah. I mean, that was super last that minute because cool. you and I were driving back from the Harley yeah. Davidson dealership and John's like, yeah, he said he'll bring out his Impala. So we got back, drove a couple blocks over, and he's literally. We're, we're, we pulled up right behind mm -hmm. him and he's tr as he pulled out and we're like, okay, yeah, this is going to be cool. Awesome yeah. car. Very <laughs> it nice ended car. up being really cool. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you guys actually think of the new film itself? Like for me, I didn't shoot it, but I got to look at y'all's images. And I think we have talked about comparing it to Color 92 because I don't, it says it's manufactured in Europe. And so I think there's speculation of, is it the same film as Color 92? It definitely doesn't mm. give, it doesn't look the same. It doesn't look the same. No. The base, I think, is even, you can kind of tell it's similar, but different a little bit. This just seems to have more of like a color pop, in my opinion. 
a war on the on warmer, the warmer right. um, side. Yeah, it's a little more vibrant. You think so? Yeah. Yeah. Or more contrasty. Yeah. Yeah, I loved it. I mean, one thing I noticed, like I was saying before, is overexposing it, which that can happen with any film, but it just lost a little bit of that warmer tone. It took more of like a mm. greenish, cooler tone, which I don't like personally in my own images, but it looked cool with what I was shooting. Like I was shooting that car, like it ended up looking good. But like with your guys, they looked awesome because they had like a bit of a warmer tone because they were like a little bit of a better exposure. But I was shooting mm. in the tungsten light. It was very like almost cyan with the warm. It was nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you shot indoors. Did you have to do a lot of color corrections when you scanned yours? I mean, generally when we color correct film, it's just color correcting color casts. So mm. I don't remember doing too much. Yeah. I what about you guys? Did you have to color correct much? I don't think so. No. No. I think we think I'm, we tried to leave it pretty yeah. neutral yeah. too so we could see the the natural look right. of it. Yeah. I think I added maybe a little bit more magenta just to offset Cheater? some of the green. That's why she won. No, it's We didn't not. know we could that have magenta, magenta, guys. We didn't know <laughs> whatever. You scanners magenta over there the that scan all day. Formula. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Sometimes it's it funny. is. Though. I definitely scan my film for warmer tones, though, like John said. It's yeah. definitely something I'd gravitate sure. towards. Mm. Yeah, I think when I was looking at your images, there was a few that may have been, because you were shooting the Leica for the first time, and there was maybe a couple that had a little bit of overexposure. Oh, right, yeah. And I think with the overexposure, because that Impala was wasn't like bright green, but definitely had a, a more vibrant mm. green. Yeah, right. But then when you look at the the images, it seems to fit fit it. The vintage tones it ended up kind of muting it down. It didn't really mm. right. capture the true color of the car. But then again, it had I don't know. To me, it's like a '70s vibe, like what's mm. filmed from the '70s, mm-hmm. like right. not, yeah. not super saturated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. look good. So would you buy it and shoot it? Because yes. you guys got it for free. I yes. mean, when we shot the review, you would buy it. You, I, already, you. I already bought another roll. So if they come out with a 120 version, I'm talking Ooh, to you, Ilford. That come would out with a 120 version good. and I'll shoot it. Mm, yeah. Ilford. That would actually probably that do is really Ilford, well. right? It makes that one. It's Ilford yeah. or is that? color. Oh, yeah. it's, it's Ilford. Yeah. yeah, we talked about it in the review. There's Ilford. Sure we're shouting out the wrong company. Yeah, there's <laughs> Ilford <laughs> Photo that does all the black and white films. And mm-hmm. so I think people, when traditionally when they think of Ilford, that's who they, they have in mind. Yeah. But then Ilford, no photo, uh, mm-hmm. on their Instagram, I think they're known as Ilford Imaging. They um, primarily make photo paper. We use some of their paper here at the lab. Mm-hmm. But they make the Sprite cameras. They make the rapid retro single-use cameras. Mm-hmm. And now my understanding is they're going to make more films. Like they have a website. If you look on the actual packaging, there's a website. And if you go to it, they have more films listed than what's available right now in the U.S. Oh, that's cool. They have a slide film. Oh, really? Oh. Which I only know of one company making slide films. I'm wondering if it's repackaged Kodak. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Because mm. um, Fuji, I mean, it's been so hard to get Fuji slide film in lately. Oh, yeah. I mean, it went like hotcakes the other day when That's we right. got it in. I think it lasted maybe two or three hours. I missed and that the was window. It. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I. Uh, I don't know if Fuji is like not making slide film or if it's just really low production. But once every two months, we'll get a small shipment of slide film in. And we have a lot on order with from Fuji. But I feel like we went a good four or five months with no Fuji slide film in. Mm-hmm. We got 40 rolls of Velvia, 40 rolls of Provia, and then like 10 packs um. each. Of the 120? Yeah, the five packs. Yeah, yeah. we did no email announcements. We did no, no social media announcements. We literally just updated our website and they were sold. In like, yeah, two or three hours. Two or three crazy. hours, yeah. yeah. I didn't even put them away. I literally left them on the table yeah. because I was like, there's no reason to put them away because they will all be gone. Yeah. So Ilford, I think, is going to have a slide film and... Uh, the distributor we talked to, well, Ilford directly hasn't said anything to us. They're just working on getting these. They're supposed to have a three pack that's going to come out. So it'd be mm-hmm. a little bit cheaper to shoot. So that's nice. Kind of like the Ultramax and then Golds have three packs. Mm. But I think they're going to keep pushing further into it. At least that's what it appears if you go to the website. Let me have one of those real quick. <laughs> it says it on there. What does it say? Oh, I'll take it. All right. Um, let's see. Ilfocolor.com. Mm-hmm. ilfocolor.com so go to the website and you can actually see clearly they're working on other things mm-hmm. that's exciting because i mean in my opinion this one is a hit so if they can continue on that streak that'd be great yeah mm-hmm. yeah actually when i was talking i sent paul uh not paul our producer but mm-hmm. paul cousins from ilford he's the our contact with ilford there 
I sent him a, the email with the video and he emailed back. He's like, this is great. You know, thanks for doing this, guys. And they've already sold out their initial allotment that came to the U.S. Oh, like, wow. Well, awesome. So they, they're hoping to get more in. But yeah. We sold most of ours, too. I think we have maybe five <laughs> bricks left. Left. No way. Plus what's in the bit, the distribution bin. Okay. Which isn't that many. It's well, it's can hold another like five we, bricks. Yeah, once that video went no, live, yeah, but, we definitely a lot of our regulars bought some of the film and then I was looking at our YouTube statistics the other day and like that video ended up getting close to like 15,000 new viewers. Like people had never seen wow. our YouTube content That's awesome. purely from that video. So I don't know why YouTube, I guess it's the YouTube al algorithm mm -hmm. just picked it up and went crazy. Hmm. Although I think we all know why. Sierra. Mm -hmm. Sierra. Mastermind no. from the beginning. No, I think it's the, ch it's the first challenge. Two years People ago when she got that Canon E1, she was in masterminding. She's behind it all. <laughs> yep. I, you know what? Maybe you're right. Maybe she's been playing us. She's been shooting lots of film, like developing mm -hmm. it, like when no one looks. <laughs> and then she's like, boom, roasted. That's why she worked those 10 hour shifts a couple years ago for so long. She was here longer than everybody else, and she's developing ago. It was a couple and months ago, John. I'll have Mike make me a video of how to shoot film, and I'm just going to play him the entire time. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> no. Exposure. What's that? <laughs> what's All right. Ava, I think you have the last thing on the table. Why, yes. why did you put our Fujifilm ink on the table? We have been through 11 printers in the time we've been open. Nine. Of just color printers. We have, we've had a few Epson and a few Fuji. And then we have our black and white printer. We've been through three. Right? Yes. So, yeah, we switched to an Epson 4x6 printer. For those of you who, you know, order prints from us, the printers are great, great colors, vibrant. But the Epson printer that we bought originally when the lab opened it eventually died so we got like a newer upgraded model the mm -hmm. d1070 and at some point i don't even remember what happened like it just it just it started um creating was that print lines lines through the prints yeah so the print we started getting print lines through it so you'd have your image and there would be all these lines going through it so because it's a professional printer they have a whole separate unit for that and you basically call support and they're like hey no worries we're going to send you out a new one and they did but then that printer didn't work. No. And then we were really in a pinch. Like we needed a printer. Yeah. We ended up having to send a few people emails like, hey, are, we're trying to fix our printer. Your prints may be delayed. Yep. And then they sent us out a second refurbished printer. But by that time, we were in need of one so bad, I just ended up buying a brand new unit. That unit went strong for like nine months. And then... Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't even a year. No, it wasn't a, a year. It wasn't even a year. And so it was still under a warranty period. I forget what happened with that one, but we had to get a replacement. Stop printing. I think, yeah, something, oh, a gear, some sort of gear yeah. broke, and it wouldn't actually take the paper. It just wouldn't play. So I call Epson. They're like, hey, no worries. They sent us a replacement, <laughs> and that replacement didn't work. No. Mm -hmm. So then I called him back, and in the meantime, I had to buy a new printer. So then we bought a, a, the older model, which is a Fuji model. Yeah, we went back we went to, back to the older original model. And we're using that. They sent out another replacement, and that one works, but it has some weird kinks about it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's got its own personality. After every <laughs> print job, you That's need a nice to way of putting it, reload it, and then you can usually it'll keep it loaded through all the print jobs until the paper runs out. But this one, um, you have to reload it every time you go to a new print job. Yeah, so, so we oh haven't my. had very good luck with printers, <laughs> so. No. The nice thing about them is they do make really nice prints they because do. they use ink rather than um, some labs use what are called DNP printers. Don't ask me what DNP mm -hmm. means. Dye sublimation or something. Yeah. And like But these use multiple shades of color, so we end up getting good prints. So, yeah, we've been through like 11 printers basically at Reformed Film Lab. Mm. Yep. Jeez. And the print orders have just been increasing too. Yeah, yeah. Ava can probably talk about that because we bought a, a bigger table for prints and we're and always running out of room. <laughs> we got to yeah. bleed into other tables, other spaces. If they start taking over my table if, if we don't package them fast enough. Makes me think of that print video we did on YouTube not that long ago where you had mm -hmm. like your 44 inch print. Oh, yeah. Yep. Did you hang that up in your house? I still got to get it back. It was actually at the Southeast Photography Museum at on Daytona State's campus. What? So it was there for a while, and I need to go back and get it. 
I think they changed out their exhibit. <laughs> Didn't they offer to buy it? One of the chair of the photography department asked me how much I was selling it for. I would have sold it. <laughs> but out. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. You didn't say what are you what are you offering? You didn't counter that? He asked me what I would sell it for. I said I have no idea. I never considered selling it. I, it's a one th of one. <laughs> this is the print that we had in the video, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is where you got like a secret location. Yeah. Which I found. You, no, you did not. <laughs> yes, I did. I think you no, did. You I remember. Didn't. No, I drove past it because. You did? Yes. Okay, well, you can I, I never it. shot there. I never went to the property. You can shoot there. I just, just drove need past to it and just saw it. And I was like, oh, that's talk funny. Talk to the people. Yeah, didn't the owners ask you not to share yeah. where it was? Well, I don't remember where it was. I remember I was just driving down Somewhere. whatever road it was. I'm not going to say the road. <laughs> I was driving down a road. And I was like, oh, that's funny. That's the same place that Ava took that picture at. But I don't remember where it was at. I didn't like mark it on my map. Yeah. Ava steals my locations, though. I If you really go to Ava's Instagram, don't. you'll see half of the locations that I have chosen. And she's like, can I shoot there before I me? always ask. Mm -mm. He says Unbelievable. yes. Unbelievable. It's, it's your fault. You could say no. Mm -mm. I'll find other It's so rude. <laughs> like, no, no, I don't really don't care that much. I don't do that many portrait photography anyway, so she does all that. But you actually complimented me the other day. Which was out of the ordinary. I don't know if I did that. Well, when you guys were on vacation a few weeks ago, John very much missed you. He was talking about you all the time. Uh, That's literally he, he would go up to the lie. bins of film over there and just kind of stand next to the 800T. <laughs> just just like lie. solemnly looking no. at it. That's a lie. Uh-uh. <laughs> no. Uh-huh. It was Truth peaceful. Comes out. Actually, I was trying to think. We actually conveniently that week got like a little bit less for some reason. I don't know why we were able to like keep up with it surprisingly because I thought like... With two people being gone, I was like, we're going to be like underwater. But it actually is like slowed down a little bit for some reason. We actually just came and stole them from the mail <laughs> yeah. and held them for a while. Then when we got back, we gave them back. Yeah, having two full timers gone was definitely a, a very busy week. But we did stay on top of things, yeah. which is good. So. That is good. All right. So we're going to take a break. And we come back. We have a lot of fun questions. My favorite is Desert Island Films. We'll be right back. We hope you're enjoying this week's podcast, Revenge of the Sierra. What we're going to be doing for you tuning in to this episode is giving you 10% off Kodak Gold. So whether you are a 120 shooter or if you shoot 35 millimeter through the rest of September, use code PODCAST6, PODCAST, the number six, and you get 10% off any Kodak Gold. Now you're probably wondering why. Well, stay tuned through the end of this episode because it's going to be a very golden second half. So we are back with episode six, Revenge of Sierra. <laughs> Revenge you know, it's funny, I had like a few title proposals for this, but totally we're going to use that on the spot. Oh, no. Okay. You're I don't know if it'll get many views, but to me, it's very funny. <laughs> like, why would I watch Revenge of Sierra? Or maybe it would just pique interest. It's Revenge of the Sierra, because Revenge of the Sith, Revenge exactly. of the Sierra. Oh, episode six. <laughs> yep. You shall all bow. So uh, if you're still watching on YouTube and you're not just listening, Dang. you probably notice things look a little bit better. Yeah. John, who is in charge of lighting, didn't turn on our key light today. <laughs> I'd be getting black for everything around here. Just so everybody knows. That's it's unbelievable. True. Well, it's. I mean, listen, we did the YouTube video the other day that's coming out soon. You did a. You were the meter maid. and <laughs> I'm the Jerry of this office. Just if anyone's ever seen Parks and Rec, I'm the Jerry of this office. You mean Gary Gergich? Yes. <laughs> That's such a funny show. It's <laughs> uh, a good show. You guys watched a little bit. One we started, we started, it. started yes. it. It's such a good show, Parks and Rec. So, uh, anyways, uh, what films have you guys been shooting this past month? And I guess I have to qualify a month because if I say the summer, Ava's going to be like, that's way too long. I've been <laughs> shooting way too many films. So, cool. what, have you, what have you been shooting lately, John? Gold, 120 only. It's like the best film ever. Gold is, it's, yeah. It really is. For some, I like it like, I've shot a little bit of one uh, 35 gold, but the 120 for some reason, I just love the way it looks. Because I tried shooting, I think I shot some Pro 400H, and I think I shot the black and white Ordo this last weekend. Oh, looked, you shot the Ordo. That was, it looked that's good. That's a unique looking, it was super, contrasting. Super contrasting. I think I was just, um, I think I was, I forget what I was exposing for. Either the shadows. I know it was just a little bit too contrasty. Like the blacks were way too black and the whites mm -hmm. were way too white. So I don't know if maybe I can mess around with my exposures a little bit. Um, but I, I like the way it looked. It was super clear. It's I think it's a 50 ISO. So there's like no grain. Um, which I like. Yeah, I like that film a lot. Yeah. Um, That's a new film for us. But gold, I think the Fuji, as far as camera, the Fuji 645. Um, I think it's a GS 645, I think is what it's called. And gold 120 has just been my go-to. I think I have like two packs of gold five packs just sitting in my fridge 
All right, Kodak Gold. Ava? Um, you want the month? <laughs> I've been, sh- I shot Candido 200 for the first time. I shot the Revelog Tesla film. I wait, shot, wait, here we go. <laughs> you can't, you can't, you can't just move everyone. on from that. Tell us about the Tesla <laughs> film. A, a, the Tesla film, I shot my dad's Tesla on the Tesla film. Can we have those sample images? Right here. Yes. You, images you right here. You can have them. Dude, some, they of them. Came out, some of them came out so good. Get, they looked really them. interesting. I uh, you were never. They looked, they went really she, well with the she vibe, was still like, bitter from the Ilford <laughs> video where you beat her. That must be what it is. <laughs> I think no, it was before, actually. My dad, no, it was before. It She's was ignoring my... your texts. She's not picking up your phone calls. <laughs> Only when she I can bring her coffee in the morning. The blue color, though, went well with the, like, the blue color of the car went well with the actual, like, lightning yeah well, tell like, us about cool. the tesla film like yeah. what is it for people yeah, who don't know the tesla film um is like they make an effect you actually know how they do that better than i do but well, it's just like a static electricity effect but yeah interestingly enough we saw like on the end of her negative like we don't know if this is what they use or not but like a little like metal it was like a super thin line that looked like a scratch but none of our cameras like her camera doesn't scratch right. and it looked like they like tapped it so we were wondering if maybe like they tapped with a piece of metal or something and like it like shot the electricity across the film. Oh, if they like you could both see like sides, connecting. If it like conducts through the film. When you could see like the connecting right. lines from that little spike at the end of it. Yeah. Uh, like okay. connecting lines. I don't know if that's where, where they hit it and like they. What's sh- the brand again on Revolog. this? Revolog. It's Revolog. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And they send it like static electricity or whatever. They do so many experimental films. Yeah. So all of the Revolog films are like. Very interesting. 400 speed or 200 speed. Yeah. Kodak Gold or Ultramax. And they pre-expose the film with all these effects. Yeah. And Tesla you know, keenly name is mm-hmm. like uh, lightning bolts, basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It looks like there's like yeah. purple lightning random places oh, it's throughout it. It's, it's, it's super purple. It's, it was pretty sick. Pretty and neat. Some, and it's random, so you don't know how it's going to overlay. Yeah. On- there was one I was so, so sad. The last frame... I, I guess oh, I didn't shoot I it. This. Had the most lightning on it, and it was really cool too. And it was super cool. So the just pos- like a black the, the photo, the positioning of the with, lightning. It yeah, was yeah. so cool. There's also some pictures though that didn't have any, so it just depends. Oh yeah, yeah. Because it's oh, random. Oh, because it's random effects. Yeah, it'd be fun to do a shoot. They, like with that film, like mm, do like a photo yeah. shoot of somebody, and like we actually yeah had one of our local photographers from Jacksonville. Um, he shot. I don't remember which one because there's so many different ones. Mm-hmm. There's like Tesla, Plexus, Texture, Laser, um, Color. Doesn't they have a coin glitch or Color? No, that's glitch is double, double film. film. Yeah, I don't know anything. Double film does some specialty effect ones too. Yeah. And but Kona. he went and did a photo shoot like with a, a model, so like professional looking shoot. And oh, he did laser. Now I laser, remember. He yep. did laser. You remember this? I remember and this. And it literally was like laser lights going through it. And so some it of the was, poses it was really cool. just were good. It was good photography. But then with the laser lights, they looked really they good. They looked very yeah. unique. But so I think it's one of those things that's like you take a risk of using it. But when it nails it, it, it yeah. really it does awesome. nail it well. Mm. So what else have you been shooting? Uh, shot some Eat Her Tea. <laughs> Go figure. What a surprise. Shocker. Um, I've shot. A I think lot you need to qualify things. that. How much 800T How much have you 800T? shot? I've been for trying you to say to I've shot some out. So only maybe like two. Hi, my name's Rolls. Ava. I'm a Cinestill <laughs> addict. Wait, how much? How many rolls do you think you shot this year? Like roughly of 800T? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> you lost count. I shot one, and it was a shared roll. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, oh, 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 shared it. Okay. So you've yep. been branching out? I've been trying to branch out, yes, because I want to try some. I've not shot some of the films, so I'm going to try them. There are 218 available at this store. Is that Actually, the, there's is more that, now. Is that there's the precise more. number? Uh, I think technically the precise number would be closer to 223. Of just color, 25? though, is not that many. No, I think that's both black and white that's and color. Black yeah, and white. that's... Yes. Yeah, that we like have on our online store. Yep. As we were setting up for the podcast today, you were just taking photos of like a few n- five new more, like new three ones. or four new yeah. films that are not on the website that are going to be on the website next week. Yep. Mm-hmm. Revelog was one of them. Yep. Revelog has a new one. Echo. 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 It has yeah. like red. The they have like a little tiny sample image on the canister. It looks like there. It's like red. In uh, like yellow. red net just like thrown onto it. Yeah. I don't know how else to explain what? that. Yeah, it made me think of like plasma or like yeah, smoke. Yeah, or like if you look at like the bottom of a pool, 
but oh, that red. Effect. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like they were trying to oh, like a sound like a yeah, like sound wave it looks echo like type weird video. and like not. So you've been shooting some of those specialty films then? I have. Hmm. Okay. Sierra, what have you been shooting lately? Ilford. Ilford. <laughs> um no, I I think the last film I shot was on our trip. Oh, I shot a lot of film on that trip. Um that, that vacation was, you guys took? Yeah, the vacation we went on. And most of it was gold and Ultramax. Okay. Did you talk about and the I composition think, of the photos? They were gold. <laughs> <laughs> Not the actual film. Oh. Okay. Just kidding. Um, YouTube view worthy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Um, yeah. So I, I haven't shot any since then until challenge video. So. <laughs> She's like, I only shoot every once in a while, but when I do, it's YouTube Amazing. magic. <laughs> Well, I I kind of want to more good, but I, I don't think, know what I, I to think, shoot. I don't know after watching that view and you have hundreds of fans, maybe oh you're my. maybe you're inspired well, to shoot like, more. Because oh. think maybe this, that can be a YouTube series. It'd be like you what? know what Sierra How many shooting views this week. Get? Oh my goodness. Follow her on her analog journey. Because think we'll with this start video, a Discord. Well, think with this <laughs> video too. She had, was given no prep time, so imagine with prep time, she could get hundreds of thousands of views. Everybody, mm. she has prep time to think about everything. I right. don't know about that. <laughs> That's probably we'll have to think of, of a clever title for it, but that should be a very good series. <laughs> um, I think that's part of the problem, though, is like I don't know what to go shoot. I always feel weird. Like, I mean, I could Whatever. go <laughs> right, but like, what's the purpose of having those photos? To besides have memories, just, but just, excuse besides me, just having them. <laughs> like, that's what I mean. Is I went and I took Yikes. pictures. <laughs> I went and took pictures on our family vacation because. <laughs> I shoot ever literally just have like a oh. point and shoot. Just take pictures of random memories and moments throughout throughout like life. That's what pictures yeah. are for. Most of my life is spent in these four walls. It's not good enough for using. Film. There's so many good memories here. <laughs> yeah, I just bring my point and shoot to work and just really his 120 point and shoot. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I actually do have the whole guy. Uh, um, what's you, their one? You have a Holga? You like their one twenty one. I have a Holga. Like, the like, yeah. like light leak one. Yeah. I only shot like one roll in it, and I did like four frames or something yeah the whole yeah, is definitely like one of those frames. you cameras that I, they kind of have a cult following but you end up getting kind of really neat looking photos with yeah. them because they're gonna look not perfect yeah so hmm. but you can get some pretty cool ones on them yeah hmm. so what's your film that you've been shooting uh, this summer yeah michael i you know ironically enough i've not been shooting a lot of film wow i'm not shooting digital um I'm shooting nothing. i just haven't been you know, <laughs> yeah. i haven't been i feel like this summer was so busy for me it was busy mm -hmm. like what uh, you shoot new zealand talk what was your favorite film there? yeah so when i was yeah we were coming up with what are we going to kind of go with the podcast today i was like well when i went to new zealand the most shot film was portra 400 mm -hmm. i think i brought that the most because i knew i you know kind of a trip of a lifetime i wanted a film that i knew was reliable not to say that other films aren't but just right. portra 400 at least solid. for me is a solid film you can be indoors you can shoot it and it can work you can be outdoors it can be cloudy you're just going to get overall great images right um, but outside of that, probably over the summer, I just shot the other day some Kodak Gold because <laughs> we were getting ready to do a new YouTube video on some 120 film that we're reviewing. Uh, I don't know when this podcast will be out, so we can't disclose quite yet what it is. But there is we a new 120. Bleep it out. There's a new 120 <laughs> film coming we to the market. Bleep it out. <laughs> the <laughs> no, no, no. no. So yeah, we did we did a YouTube video of shooting some 120 film. That I think this podcast will be out after it comes out. So um, there is a clue somewhere actually in the video. So I don't need to Nobody say it. it. No, there is there is a clue. No one look at it. But um, so I pulled out the contacts, got new batteries in it, just to make sure it was working because I haven't haven't been shooting. But I took a couple rolls of Kodak Gold and shot just some of my kids in the backyard. And I think, yeah, I mean, I was just like, man, Kodak Gold. So it's good. such a solid it is so summer. Good. Yeah. And Every you know, summer. It's, it's, it's not like been in film. 120 very long. That's like, why that's I love it. I, yeah. I love it. I love the 120 variant. It doesn't look, it's not that it's, I guess maybe just because you're getting more, a little bit more information with the larger format. Like I've shot Gold on 35 and I just, it was like a nice film, but I wasn't like, oh my gosh, I love this. But for some reason, the 35 or the, on the 120, I just, I love just the way like, it looks. Yeah. Well, yeah, and Probably. you're shooting your 120 camera has a really quality lens, so you know, the lens makes a big difference. So yeah. when you're shooting medium format, generally, if you have a nice camera, matching it with the film kind of gives it. But yeah, I just went out and shot the kids in the backyard, then playing <laughs> with the neighbor friends. You know who I'm talking about? Our neighbors. You shot the neighbors. Yeah, I shot the neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> it was annoying the crap out of me. <laughs> oh, oh, and um, 
I actually text our neighbor some of the photos because we're friends with them. Text him. I was like, hey, I got some photos of the kids the other day. And she's like, and I got them on the contacts, like shooting oh. F2, 80 millimeter lens, a really nice blurred background. And she's like, oh my goodness, I love these. <laughs> so, I mean, a mix between a really good camera and a good film. Yeah. But um, probably, so yeah, Portrait 400 was the big one on New Zealand, Kodak Gold as of late. Um, and aside from that, yeah, I just, I've had a busy summer, I think with the lab being busy and just mm -hmm. with other life things, I've not shot a lot. Mm -hmm. So I guess me and Sierra are in the same boat. I haven't really shot that much film too, actually, but which actually I do like a lot enough. <laughs> you shoot enough. 120 film. <laughs> segways me to the, segways me to the next subject. If Kodak comes out with a new film soon, what would you want it to be? Portrait 1600. <laughs> I don't know. It would be really funny if they came out it with that. It actually would be. Or a 3200. I have one in mind, but I'm going to go last. Mm -hmm. But I'd like to see like a low speed black and white, maybe. Or a lot of do black and whites. Because I don't think they really have one right now. They have a 100 speed. Yeah, they have T-Max Yeah, but I'm thinking of like Elford, like their 50 ISO. They have an 80 ISO, I think, and mm -hmm. a 25. Five? Yeah, they have yes. Pan F. Yeah. Ilford has Pan F, which is 50. The Ortho Plus, mm -hmm. which is 80. 80. Yep. 80. So they definitely have some sub 100s, but yeah. Kodak does not. I think it'd be interesting to see what they would do with like a fine green or mm. fine speed film or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. Be interesting to see. Yeah. The, kind of what made me think of this was, so with the Super 8 camera that's out, they have, Kodak makes five films for it. They make a reversal Tri-X, which basically is a positive black and white. So you develop it, you can put it on a projector and you can see it. So they old. make a 500T, 200T, I'm looking at the boxes. <laughs> and then, so T tungsten for indoor lighting. And then they make a 50D. So we're gonna sell all these. We're gonna do the review on it. It's gonna be great. But they make ectochrome. So they make a slide film that you can mm. shoot. And so you're shooting a live slide for a movie. But when I was looking at reviews on this, the Ektachrome actually was a re-release. They discontinued Ektachrome years ago oh. and Ektachrome came back out in 2017 or 18. So Ektachrome oh. actually on the market is relatively new as far as what we have for Ektachrome. So it just kind of got me thinking if Kodak were to go and take the next step, what would they want to release? You know, what, mm -hmm. what would you want them to release? I, I could guess what you're going to, I'm not going to say it because I don't want to spoil it, but All I think right. I know what yours is going right. to be. Yep. I want to know as well. Yeah, I had one in mind, like, right, because when I was watching it, kind of got, I was like, all right, we're going to talk about this on the podcast. What would we want Kodak to come out with next? Because, you know, Ilford is coming out with films. Uh, Harmon came out with the Phoenix. That was their first color film. And we're starting to see Pentax made a new camera. I think we're starting to see companies go back and do research and develop and, ma and make more. Mm. But if you could have your own new film from Kodak, what do you would, what would you want them to make? Energy. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Kodak is the maker. Kodak Eastman is the maker of their their base for Cinestill. I'm I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I have I have no idea. Just say anything. No. You have everything you want. Bring basically. back the Actar 1000. Oh, that <laughs> actually would be really cool. Wait, that's that. a real thing. Yeah, is there a canister that. somewhere? It might be actually be in be that in box. My but stash. We had a canister come through. I think actually someone was asking like, is this because what, what we do is we write down the film stocks on the order forms. And we sent them to people so they know what their film stock was. And so I was like, is this correct? Like it says Kodak, like 1,000. Like if someone accidentally add an extra zero, I was like, no, like that was a cancer that came in. So I was like, I don't know when it was made. It was supposed yeah, to be I really think I saw ago. that the other day. Is it in that bin right over there? It, it might be, but it's, it's in the bin. It's a super cool mm -hmm. canister, but it's like, yeah, it's like a 1,000 speed Ektar, which is that funny because be really cool. is their low speed film now. Yeah, mm -hmm. you were like, is, is nice this a typo? 1,000? Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. Misprint. My, my bad handwriting, you never know. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. So, Ektar 1,000? That would, yeah, that would be cool to see. I, yeah, I think maybe anything above 800 for yeah. a color film <laughs> would be unique. Like, yeah. 16. 16, mm. 16. Sierra, any new film? <laughs> Sierra's like, I don't I know. I don't know. <laughs> I just sell it to people. I don't, I just package it up. I don't. Sierra's like, I don't I need don't a know. new film. I have my vintage film. This is all I'm going to shoot now. <laughs> no. Portrait 200. That'd be like a 160 basically, but. Yeah. yeah, I think the 160 is too close to that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I don't know. Okay, what about you, Mr. Michael? I would want Kodak to come out with Ultramax and 400. Or no, Ultramax and 400 and 120. 120. Dang, I thought you were going to say <gasps> yeah. Kodachrome. Oh. No. I don't know why I thought Kodachrome because of like the Ektachrome. I thought maybe like, oh, like the Kodachrome's like yeah, that. Yeah, no, there's no way Kodachrome's coming back. <laughs> no. I'm pretty sure it was like a different chemistry process. Yeah, it was K14. K14. Yeah. K14. Yeah. yeah. In fact, that on YouTube, I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure there's a video someone made of shooting the last roll of Kodachrome 
and I'm 99% sure it was like portraits of Robert De Niro. I could be Whoa, wrong. That's cool. But the guy was like, this is the last role. I'm going to take professional portraits of Robert De Niro. Wow, uh, you can let me legend. know in the comments if I'm wrong about this. <laughs> but for some reason, I'm picturing Robert De Niro in my mind. And they sent it to Dwayne's Photo Lab. They're a big E6 processor here in the States. Mm -hmm. And it was like the last Kodachrome. Granted, wow, it wasn't E6. Wild. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, Have you heard the song Kodachrome? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. that's him. Yeah. That's an I oldie. love that song. Yeah, oldie song. That's but yeah, I wish Kodak because they so they came out with the gold in the 120, mm -hmm. and it was super popular because it's cheap. It's mm -hmm. you know, Portra yeah. 400 I think is like 65 dollars a box, and Kodak yeah. Gold is 35. So it's almost like yeah. half the cost. Yeah, and yes. I think Ultramax being their other consumer film, if it came out in 120, I think it would do very well. Mm -hmm. But it's just the Kodak Gold and Ultramax are some of our best selling films. Right, so I think have... I would like to see a 400 speed. So if you need a little bit more speed or if you wanted to push it, I think that would be a neat thing because yeah. yeah. I, I like 120 film more than 35. <laughs> 120 for the win. <laughs> yeah. but i shoot both i shoot the leica but i think if i if kodak were to come out with a new film ultramax 120 would be that would, that would be, be cool. a sweet spot comment below they, they gotta be working on that right hmm? i don't know you think. they don't, don't have know. a they don't have a pro image one either though right in 120? 120 no pro no. image is just 35 millimeter because there's a couple that they don't have they don't have the pro image they don't have ultramax they don't have um color plus right that was like the only three they really yeah. don't yeah. have 124 yeah what is the difference between gold and color plus they're the same speed that sounds like a future YouTube video. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, it would just be a little bit of a. I thought. I thought. I thought it's gold like had huge, warmer tones. Hue difference. But maybe yeah. I'm, I might be wrong. I don't know. But color I think, plus. Yeah, I think it'd definitely be something we'd have to shoot same camera, same lens, like we did with the Fuji, mm. the two and the four hundreds, and see from there. Like, the what is the difference? Yeah. So, all right. Final question for today's podcast: Desert Island Reformed Film Lab Island Edition. That's a one-hour photo lab on on an undisclosed location ah. island. You are there for the rest of your life, and you can only shoot four films. I think Legally we decided four. You can only shoot four <laughs> films for the rest of your life. What are the four films, and why? I That's think eight hundred T gold, and I gotta think of the other two. <laughs> I think for me it would be eight hundred T gold, the, the same ones. No, 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 no. Uh, the Ilfa Copycat. color and HP five. Okay, I'm gonna say definitely gold, but that's like my favorite film ever. I think gold. Oh, this is so hard. And I'm gonna go and do night shots instead, just because we already have two eight hundred Ts. So I'll say night shots. Mm -hmm. If I wanted eight hundred speed film that I can shoot. In the island nights or whatever. <laughs> Gold. <laughs> I'll say night shots. Um, two more. So I have two yeah, the other two. two black and white. That's how I was originally going to frame it. It was like two color, two black and white. But you can pick the four films Mummy. that you can only shoot for the rest of your life. Yeah. My third one is Mummy Film. So 800T, Gold, and Mummy. BWXX would be my other. Oh, Sinister BWXX would be my third. And then my fourth would be. I think my fourth one would be a Revlog film. Like a specialty I, film? I think it would be yeah. fun to get something like that because you'd have the time to mess with it. You'd go around on the island and be like, oh, pineapples, click, and they have specialty effects on them. <laughs> yeah, I think because also they're all or different. coconuts. They're all different. The ortho. Oh, like they always, ortho. It always comes out different. <gasps> no, Loma Purple. What am I thinking? Yeah, I know, no, John. Not the ortho, Lomography Purple. That would must be what it'd be. <laughs> get the heck out of here, John. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if you were going to say Loma I Chrome. I was kind of waiting for it. I was thinking of like my favorite. You're like the Loma shot. Chrome evangelist. I know. So purple. We actually gold. had someone come in the other day, right? And say mm -hmm. they wanted Loma Chrome because of you. You're Trend welcome, world. <laughs> <laughs> no, so gold, it would be gold, purple, night shots, BWXX, and it's still. All right. Mm. Kodak Actar, Kodak Portrait 800, mm. HP5. So I think you and I are on the HP5 game. And I don't know on the fourth one because originally it was only going to be Ooh, three. Aurora 800, though. I didn't think about that one. Oh, That's yeah. A good one. So Actar, Portrait 800, HP5. And then if I have to throw in a fourth one, it would probably be. I'm like spinning through my mind mm -hmm. all the films that we have, all 230 mm -hmm. something films that yeah. we have. Probably Portra 400. I guess clearly I'm like team Kodak for color and team Ilford for black and white. Mm -hmm. Is no one going to go slide? Oh, that would be fun. Because you still have one more, right? You did three? No, I have four. Oh, you do? Everyone I have did four? Gold. Yeah. I have gold, Sinistil, Mummy, and. Oh, right. A, a, Revol a Revolog. A Revolog. I don't yeah. know which one. You'd get so bored shooting that. Revelog? so annoyed. Yeah. 
Because think, it, no, it would think give me if you're something Desert to do. I, if you're Desert Island, though, think uh, gold. I could experiment with everything I wanted, so I do all my effects on my own film. I also have gold. Buying. Yeah, but then if you buy though, if you just buy one that just has a single effect, then it's just gonna be like. But oh, it, it's the same it thing looks over and over different again. in every image, and it's never the same. Mm-hmm. I, would I, say, don't I like think I agree with you, Ava. Like it's gonna be different every image. Like you can't plan the specialty yeah. effects, mm-hmm. so you would be fine. I just don't like. You could. You would have. Films, if, did so. you? Do we have an abundance of these films? Yeah, basically Kodak flies a plane over once a month and drops. <laughs> and just drops. A Kodak film and their manufacturer of choice. Makes sense. Listen, yes, it does. it's desert <laughs> island. You can do whatever you want. Exactly. <laughs> oh man. So, leave us a comment down below. What would your desert island films be? Yep. Thanks for tuning yeah. in, All and right. we'll see you in the next podcast. Cheers. 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 Bye. Bye. Muffins. 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 Let's get some muffins. <laughs>